Hello guys, welcome back to another Monster Hunter Stories 2 video. This is a tips video that's going to be a little bit different because I decided to wait until something like now where I've had over 200 hours played, completed all of the end game HR content including both the Elders layer and the Special Elders layer while making notes along the journey of tips that might be useful to everyone including people who might have been playing for quite a while. And in light of that I'm going to try and order them in terms of the simplest and most common at the start and work our way to the more in-depth guide like tips related to combat etc towards the end of the video. Video. So to start things off, when looting eggs in dens, you never have to worry about waking up a monster that's actually nesting at the den. Typically when you loot three and above eggs around a sleeping monster, you run the risk of waking it up and it's very easy to get out of that situation if you're speed farming in solo co-op expeditions or low enough level in the world where you can't quick finish something. There are two methods based on whether you've been detected or not. So the moment the monster wakes up, you immediately just want to walk around the back of it and start heading towards the side of the map and take the long route out against the wall. In most cases you won't be seen, however if you're detected the moment the monster wakes up because you were maybe a little bit slow with the reactions, you can still just run around the back of it and the monster will get very confused and slowly turn trying to search for you, which can look quite comedic. But once the monster is facing away from the exit, you're free to make a run for it. And in some cases, like with this brute Tigrex, they might even freak out and start sprinting to the other side of the room. Now I haven't figured out a solution for when a monster gets summoned into the room, so if anyone knows a way to avoid that, uh, please let me know down in the comments. Another small tip is when you're looting the eggs, don't spam the button to clear the dialogue because you might end up accidentally looting again when that dialogue clears and losing the egg you wanted to keep. Um, auto mounting, very simple, don't just press the summon button to mount your monster, hold the button down to auto mount which works perfectly when say in a co-op expedition. As you get to the end of the room to obtain the egg, you can still get detected by monsters outside that room so you can immediately start running backwards and mount up whilst running. The next tip is once you get into high rank the first thing you should do is purchase all six expedition party slots. Make sure to select a variety of different maps, set to find rare items or do the thorough mode and this will see you earn an infinite amount of armor spheres, weapon spheres, prayer pot charms, coins to sell for zenny and nutrients. Then you want to make sure you max out your character with those nutrients ASAP, 10 of each being strength, vitality and defense. Don't worry about wasting these or the bottle caps spent to purchase the expedition party slots because the nutrients will be in infinite supply from the expedition rewards and the bottle caps can be farmed very easily with the methods we will get into later. When crafting armor or weapons or selling trading items, never use the auto button. So for crafting, let's take this Gravios armor as an example. I have quite a lot of the base material needed, which is the Gravios carapaces. It's a basic material that's easily farmed and I can just manually fill 12 of those because I have enough. But let's say I press the auto button, it wants to use the one rare item that I have and only two pieces of the common material. Nobody would ever do that by choice because these rare materials are needed for advanced upgrades later on. So yeah, never press the auto fill button and the same applies when selling for two reasons. Firstly, let's say you're loaded. There is a Zenny cap of 9,999,999, which is a seven digit number, right? Seven nines. If you're like me and you've been saving up all of your trading items, by selling them with the sell all option, you'd make over 14 million zenny, that is higher than the cap. Now, if the game was working properly, that would already be bad because you'd be selling over the cap, which means you'd be throwing away all of that extra zenny. But this system is a lot worse than that because of what I assume to be a bug. If you're selling over the cap, you don't even get any of the money. Your current zenny will stay the same as it was before you sold the items. So firstly, save the game before you sell your stuff, take note of your current balance, then go into the sell items, go to the last tab, and just start manually selling all of these items where in the description it says sell for zenny, whilst intermittently checking your balance to make sure you're not approaching the cap. I'd also recommend throwing on the selling charm at the prayer pot before selling in bulk. So this next tip is in relation to talisman farming. So the most financially efficient method is going to be farming gold mining nodes with the gathering charm on with loads of really good locations that there's already been tons of guides for already but I wanted to talk about purchasing talismans via the bottle cap vendors HR tab. Now this cannot be safe scummed because the pool rotation is fixed. So whilst you can get your bottle caps back by reloading a save, it won't reset the talisman pool. However, there is still some benefit in saving and purchasing them. By doing this, you get to see what talismans are in the rotation. So say you get four or five talismans in and you find the perfect talisman, you might decide that that's worth the caps. And if there's nothing there that you don't want, you just reload your save. So what I suggest is store a load of bottle caps, make sure you save the game, 
then spent all of them on the talismans just to see if at any point in the rotation there is an ultra rare high tier charm. If there's something there make a note of it, either way you can reload your save to get your bottle caps back. Now I haven't tested if this pull rotation changes after a set amount of time because I only started testing this before making this video but if anyone knows if the rotation changes after a set time or activity uh, please do let me know down in the comments. Okay, instant 0 to level 30 uh, when leveling your monsters to unlock their genes. This is something you're going to be doing a lot when you get into gene farming, which is going to be the majority of endgame. Now this is going to depend on your level, and the simplest way to say it is, take your monsters to encounters that are the highest enemy level that you're able to quick finish. The most efficient method for this is going to require you to have cleared all of the elders layers, because they offer perfect stages for you to transition through as you level up, to test which stage you can quick finish on. So as an example, I'm in the early level 80s, and as such the highest I can quick finish on is like stage 6 of the special elders layer, but I'm pretty sure you only need to be able to quick finish on stage 2 of the regular elders layer to have every one of your monsters automatically hit level 30. Okay, so now let's get into farming. I will probably be making an advanced farming guide at a later point, but let's quick fire through the basics. So first I want to talk about co-op efficiency, and I'll start by saying soloing the co-op expeditions is by far the most efficient way to farm, be it bottle caps, SR tickets, genes, and of course the elders and deviants that you're after, which I'll explain individually in a moment. The issue with actual co-op with other human players is that there's a lot of lag and delay in combat, there's more risk that someone is going to trigger a random encounter which you're obviously not going to want. What you do want is to bring a Naga Cougar or one of its variants to access its stealth ability and you can just run through the map collecting all of the chests and eggs and then the final encounter. And this includes all three of the ticket expeditions, normal being good for caps and farming silver tickets, silver being great for farming caps or farming jeans from rainbow eggs and a high chance to get gold SR tickets from chests and of course SR tickets are mostly spent on farming specific deviant and elder eggs that you're after. Silver tickets are what I spend the majority of my time farming as you're mostly getting 10 caps from the chests as opposed to 5. The 3 eggs you're looting are mostly going to be rainbow eggs especially when using the finding charm which is ideal for gene farming especially when you've selected a specific biome. For example the desert biome is going to have a lot more non-element XL genes and of course a high chance to also get those gold SR tickets that I mentioned. When it's time to spend those gold tickets going after a specific Elder Dragon or Deviant, make sure you manually save the game as once you've finished it, if you didn't get the egg you were looking for, you have the option to reload the game and keep your ticket. Though I very rarely do this because bottle cap farming is so easy with the lower ticket expeditions to the point I have to keep buying SR tickets to not hit the 999 bottle cap. cap. <laughs> And most of the time, if I don't get the egg that I want, I would still be able to use the genes that are on the monster that I didn't need at that time. Of course you have one final very efficient method, but it requires you to have a friend, and together you can simply take turns to spend a uh, SR ticket, and essentially double your expedition runs by spending one ticket every two runs. And yes, you can of course jump into random SR lobbies free of charge, but I really don't recommend this. The amount of stress you're going to go through just trying to get into a lobby, then not being able to have any control over what the other person is doing. Doing. like they probably won't be using a Naga Cougar, they're going to run into every single enemy, they're going to try to loot more than three eggs at a nest and end up summoning a monster and engaging in that. Nah, either farm the bottle caps for the tickets or just solo it, or go in with a friend. Same when you're hosting, do you really want to risk a random coming in and aggroing every enemy or worse, which has happened to me before, they run straight to the final boss and end up dying because they're soloing it and then you lose your ticket because you didn't save. One last thing about the co-op expeditions is the prayer pot charms. Now initially, I thought that maybe they didn't work in co-op because when you apply them, the timer doesn't decay when you're inside co-op, the same way it doesn't decay when you're standing in the village hub. But I can confirm that they do work because when you play with someone else, you're notified that you're being given the effects of their charm as well. So solo, I typically use the finding charm to increase the chance of rainbow eggs. And if playing with a friend, I usually ask them to use the gathering charm to potentially improve the items obtained from chests. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether that has any effect as you and the person you're playing with will get the same items from chests, suggesting that they're predetermined, but whether that determined outcome takes into account the gathering charm when you enter, I don't know. So finally, let's talk about combat a little bit. The biggest thing that stands out to me in terms of combat is how people utilize the kinship. 
you've got various levels of players in relation to when they spend their kinship, right? You've got the ones that just use it when they get it, and then you get the players who think it's best to wait until their companion or co-op friend get theirs, and then they want to do the double kinship. You don't really want to do either of those things unless, obviously, the monster's got 10% HP left and you want to flex on the finish. The kinship meter is the entire foundation of the combat system. You need it to cast your abilities, the monsters need it to cast theirs, obviously the main kinship skill itself, you can heal yourself with it. So I'll try and give a number of examples of when you might want to use it strategically. So the first and most obvious thing that I expect you to already know is using the full kinship skill is going to cancel the enemy monster's turn, similar to head-to-heads. So the most basic use would be to wait until that monster isn't targeting anyone, as this indicates it's going to use an ability which will either be a power-up state or an area of effect attack or a massive single target skill. So using your kinship skill is going to cancel that at minimum for that one turn, so they still might end up going for that move on the next turn, which is why I say this is the most basic time to use it because there's far more strategy that you can utilize with it. First of all, the kinship can be stored. That means maxing out a kinship bar, switching into another monster, means you can start building up on that monster and then have access to multiple kinship skills when you need them just by swapping them in. And of course, there are different types of kinship skills. Some are pure elemental, some are physical and can crit and do massive part break damage. Some are area of effect skills that hit multiple targets, all having their own benefits to use at specific times. In some cases, you never even want to spend your kinship skill because if you've built a monster with active skill genes that are super powerful, but cost loads of kinship to cast like between 40 and 50 kinship if you just stay at max kinship your monster will intermittently just cast those massive active skills because it has the resources and it will do that automatically you can also use it in an emergency for its healing benefits by activating the riding mode which will heal you and your monster speaking of which the riding mechanic which can be done at max kinship i don't see enough people utilizing this it's extremely powerful and this is the number one technique i use when soloing monsters meaning where you, you don't bring a companion or anything like that Let's say you've got a monster that's specialized in a specific type, a power type for example, and it only has power active skills, which would be rare in an optimized build, but let's just say that's what you've got for the sake of argument. When you're riding, you can select any type counter like you can with your character, except now you're mounted, allowing you to use your monster skills when appropriate, or you can just focus on non-skill counters to win head-to-heads and build your kinship gauge to level three, allowing for massive damage increase on the actual kinship skill when you decide to use it. All of this stuff works especially well when you you've built your monster with kinship boosting genes such as soul kinship, head to head, partner, mounting charm at the prayer pot, which is another tip by the way, you absolutely want to get your prayer pot to level 20 to get the full benefits of these charms, and even using the gun lance where the abilities have kinship boost modifiers built into them. The combat aspect of this game is something I can talk about for a long time and I think it's best we leave it there for now and make dedicated guides in relation to the combat. But in regard to general tips, I think that pretty much covers it for this video, I'm sure there's a bunch of things I've forgotten to include and I'm sure there's even more that I don't even know about so please let me know if you have any great tips down in the comment section. If you like this video please hit the thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more Monster Hunter Stories 2 content coming soon. Okay guys until next time take care.